Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from azuradomation.com and welcome to another section of our course Playwright with C-Sharp.net and in this section we are going to talk about API testing with Playwright in C-Sharp.net so this is going to be another section which is going to exclusively talk about how we can do API testing using Playwright library and we have been talking about Playwright's basics concepts in one section and then BDD integration in another section. And in this section, we are going to talk exclusively about how we can integrate Playwright with c .net for API testing. And this is very important to understand that with the API testing feature of Playwright, you don't even have to hunt around with different tools like HTTP client or REST Sharp. You can directly use everything using Playwright library itself. So let's see how we could able to do that in this particular section. So before jumping into the API testing with Playwright, I'm going to show you the application under test, which I'm going to show just for this particular video, because this is going to be a very, very super simple application, by the way. This is like a scaffolded application that you can even get if you create a simple ASP.NET Core Web API project. But I have added a few more things over here, like a model with a record type as well as a class type. Also, there is a C data to seed the data. Uh, and then there is um, uh, like a simple controllers, as you can see here, to get an employee or a person by the name and also post an operation like that. So I'm going to quickly run this code and show you. By the way, this particular code is also used for the demonstration of the record type in C Sharp as well as the anonymous type. All right. So as you can see over here, this particular code uh, is going to spin up this particular application in a Swagger documentation. You can just do an execute. You will see that it gets all the person. And similarly, if I want to get a person by its name, I could just pass the name as Karthik. And if I do an execute, you will see that it's going to give me a Karthik over here with this information. And this information matches exactly with this information. So that's what this particular application does. Well, as that said, I'm going to use this application for testing using the Playwright API feature. All right. So in order to do that, the first thing is I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this as test project. I'm going to use XUnit as the testing uh, library for the test runner. And then I'm going to use the framework, which is .NET 6. And let's create the project. So that's going to have all the different libraries, dependencies that we require. And now I'm going to go and add the Playwright. So this is the Playwright which I'm talking about. So I'm going to install the Playwright. And I'm also going to install Fluent Assertion, which I always do because it's very easier to work with. So I'm going to do this. All right. Once I have these two libraries, then I can start working with Playwright. So if you have seen my other sections where in order to invoke the Playwright, we use what is called as using var Playwright is equal to await new playwright.create instance. We need to do the exact same thing even here as well. But if you go to the Playwright's documentation, so let's say if I just go to the playwright.dev and if I choose the .NET documentation and then if I go to the getting started, there is something called as an API testing section over here. But this particular section fully focuses on the example using the Microsoft.playwright.nUnit package. They don't really talk about the out of the box feature instead they just wrap it around with the nunit framework so that you don't really have to create the uh, request uh, object as well as the way that you can call some of the scaffold codes which you also did even in the playwright test execution if you have seen my other sections so that's exactly what it does i mean this particular code does or this particular documentation explains you but I'm not really go with this particular documentation. Rather, we are not even going to use any unit and we are using X unit for that matter. So let's say how we could be able to create the API project over here. So in order to demonstrate that, as I told you before, since we have installed the Playwright, we can start writing the code pretty much like how we do for the UI application, which is going to be Playwright of await. And then we need to use this Playwright, just coming from the Microsoft Playwright. And then I need to call this create async method. And because this is an await, we also need to do what is called as a async of task. So this is what we need to do to create the playwrights object. And once we have the playwright object, we are then going to use the playwright dot what is called as an API request. So this is what is the interface that we require for the API testing. And you can see that if once I hover here, it tells you that it exposes an API that can be used for the web API testing. So if we go into this particular uh, API testing API request property, 
and if you go to the i api request you can see that it is a partial interface which is going to be calling a new context something like this and then you will see that it is going to spit you out the i api request context something like that and this i api request context is going to be helpful for you to do a lot of things which are something we are going to be discussing this entire section but for now this is what it is well once we have this we can then call what is called as a new context async as you just saw on the metadata so because this is an async code we can then call the uh, request is equal to await of the new uh, context async request that's it this is how you create a request object and once you have the request, I mean, this, this is not request really, basically, basically uh, this is going to be what is called as a request context. So we can probably even contest request context so that it's not very diff confusing with the request, the actual request versus the request context itself. And once we have the request context, we can then start performing the post operation or a get operation or whatever it is. So if you see that, there is a post async, get async, delete async so all the rest operation we could able to do using this particular variable and you can see that it just brings you up all those details so delete fetch get head patch post put create form data storage state async and there is a dispose async so these are things that you can do so the storage state async is something which we can't do in this particular demonstration because it is something you can use the same api data to be cached for the browser UI automation, which is not the scope of this particular section, but you could able to do that as well. Well, as it said, now we have the request context and now we need to work with our application that we just showed you. So how do we do it? Well, in order to do it, the first thing is we need to somehow pass the base URL. So where do I really pass the base URL? And you can see that we don't really get a base URL somewhere here. Well, in order to achieve that, we are going to go to this new context. And if you remember in the metadata, I showed you something like API request new context option. We could able to potentially use it. So we can just pass the properties here. And one of the property in that is the base URL, as you can see. Or you can even pass proxy, timeout, extra HTTP header, like that. The one which we are interested in is the base URL. And the base URL of our application, it is this one. So I'm going to copy this whole URL. And because we are going to be using the new API request, new context, something like this, you don't have to use the braces up like that. So this is going to be matching. Or you can also use the type declaration, something like this. So this is another way of you doing that particular type declaration. You don't even have to give the new API request, new context option. You can just give new of the open and close parenthesis, which in turn it refers the API request new context options as well. This is a new feature in C sharp, by the way. All right. And once we have that, we can then start performing the get operation, which I was talking about. So the get operation that we are going to be doing is the get person by name, for example. So if I just give get person by name as, as I told you, Karthik, and if I execute, you will see that it gives me the Karthik detail. So this is the URL that we're talking about here. So I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to paste it over here. So that's the URL that we're talking about. So I'm going to say var of response is equal to await of the request context dot get async. And because everything is asynchronous, we also need to use this await keyword. All right, that gives us the response. So let's see how this actually works. I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Let's run the app and Let's also go to the unit test. And if I try maybe debugging the code, you will see that now we have came to the request context over here and we're gonna perform a get async operation. So if I just do a step over, you will see that the response is now null. The reason why the response is now null is because you will see that there is an exception coming up over here. And if you go to this exception, it says that in order to perform the get operation as you have specified to me, it has to be an HTTPS operation. But because you're going to be doing an HTTPS operation, it is a self-signed certificate and I can't really proceed that for you. So basically, self-signed certificate is something not 
that you can do it with this playwright so you need to either have a self like a signed certificate if not you're going to get an https error and in order to avoid that https error this is exactly the same thing that you can you get it in the rest sharp as well uh, and the way that resolve the problem in the rest sharp world is different but the way we can resolve the problem in playwright is much much different all you need to do is you need to just give ignore https error and then just set true so this way the code is gonna just ignore the HTTPS error and then it is gonna keep executing it. It's just gonna keep continuing it. So I have did that and then I'm executing the code once again. And now if I just do a step over, you'll see that the response is gonna be coming up. It is gonna be saying that the API response is 204 and it has did something magical there. So it is not the error at least, but it is going to give us something. But now that we need to get the response, right? we have to see what is the response coming up. In order to see the response, I'm gonna say var data is equal to response dot, and there is something called as a method as JSON async method. And because this is async, we again need to use an await keyword. So basically, you can do the data to be retrieved either as a JSON async or body async or text async. You can do whatever that you like. So I'm just going to go with the JSON for now and I will see how it's going to boil down and print. This comes over here and if I just step over and now if I see that data, you will see that the data is coming up. It says name as Karthik and email, phone number, address and things of that nature. So basically we are now getting the response back. So that's it. This is how we could able to perform a simple API get operation using playwright with c .net. so this is the way that you could do it without using the playwright dot test dot n init because that's something that you have to stick with the n init library but with the x init you could do it something like this just create the playwright object and then call the api request property and then call the new context async which is going to do all the magics for you that's it this is how the api testing with the rest sharp works in a more basic way but in our upcoming videos, we'll see how we could able to do this even better with an application which has even got authentications in it.